I'm here on the Siemens booth at Distributec and I've met up with Eric from Centerpoint. Eric, you had a recent announcement yes. with Siemens on electromagnetic pulse detection. Right. For folks that don't know, mm -hmm. what's an electromagnetic pulse? Okay. So electromagnetic pulse is a uh, pulse of energy that's generated when a uh, nuclear weapon is detonated at above about 19 miles in the atmosphere. Okay. And so what that'll do is it'll generate this strong pulse that can damage electronics that we use primarily in our substations uh, for control and, and, and uh, protection of the power system. Okay. Yes. And so, so what have you done with Siemens? So we were working on a solution. We ended up partnering with Siemens after investigating many different vendors for relays. Right. Because the relays that we selected, we wanted them to be robust enough to work with the mitigations that we were developing such that they would survive an electromagnetic pulse. And so as a result of that, we've worked to develop a compact solution that is capable of surviving a harsh electromagnetic environment, yeah. which would result from some type of a weapon that someone could try to disrupt electricity to our end users. And, and if I may, so you, this is a, a relay, it's a piece of, it's an IoT yes. box, it's, what, what is it? Absolutely, so what it looks like is instead of our typical 20 foot by 30 foot control house, yeah. we've actually condensed that down into a three foot by four foot cabinet which allows us to house all of the electronics in a very small space. Right. And the main advantage of this being in a small space is that it needed to be uh, economically viable from a mitigation standpoint. So a lot of the mitigations we looked at were gonna cost millions of dollars. Okay. By compressing this and using a digital format, we're able to do it for about 25% of the cost of other comparable solutions. So not only do we exceed the military standard in terms of hardening for EMP, but we also do it at much lower cost so that it's easier for people to implement and protect their systems that are deployed in their substations. Now I have to admit it's, it's a technology and a, let's say a, a risk case that I haven't spent a lot of time on, Right. but I'm guessing, God forbid, something bad happens. Right. So the device itself detects this, it, it, it then does something, or, or is it a signal? I can't imagine it's a signal coming from the control office. Right, that's a very good question. So it, it encompasses both the detection and the mitigation. So detection, one thing about electromagnetic pulses is that there's nothing to see. So you won't necessarily know that something has occurred. It's gone past. So the first thing that you need to do is detect it so that you know what type of event has occurred and then you can respond to that with your operational plans. Okay. Uh, secondly, when we talk about mitigation, we really want to block that electromagnetic energy. So we form a metallic shield that protects from that uh, radiated field. And then also the other problem is, is that on our metallic cables that we often use in substations, the signal will couple to the copper cable and it can damage electronics that way. So one of the primary features that we employ is the use of fiber optic cable. So by going to a fiber optic cable, we can isolate that pulse from the equipment right. such that it's not damaged. And then put it into the um, existing control house without the need to rebuild, rebuild an entire, yeah, yeah rebuild an entire, scratch. right. So if you had to rebuild, you may have to buy new property. You have long outages, it, uh, long construction schedules. By placing this inside of the existing control house, we're able to expedite that. So the first installation took us only seven days to put into service after we delivered the hardware to the site. So it's oh, wow. pretty, pretty remarkable in terms of our typical project timelines, but even more remarkable when yeah, you consider that twice. this is a resiliency solution. Uh, it's something that we don't necessarily just have to use for EMP as well. So in Houston, where I'm based, yeah. uh, we've had problems with floods. Um, we've had control house flyer, fires. And so as a result, if you have a fire or if you have a flood, you can also deploy the same technology to the site okay. to rapidly get it back into use. So like I mentioned, it took us seven days in order to get this site back up and in, in install, installed. Yeah. So if we had another type of emergency, a fire or a flood, then theoretically, once it was safe to go back into the site and begin work, within approximately a week, You're we back. could get the site back working. Oh wow, okay. Yes. So it's, uh, it's something that we see as the design of the future for substations. Uh, when we start to think about the term resiliency, it's often used today around well, how fast can you bounce back. 
But one of the primary features of being able to bounce back is adaptability. And True. so you want that adaptability in your system. Well, if you're building fixed installations that are 20 foot by 30 foot control houses the way that we have in the past, it's not very easy to be adaptable. But if you're building a three foot by four foot cabinet that can do the same thing, now you can redeploy that for a number of emergency type situations to get electricity back in service. Wow, yeah, it's a whole different angle to the, the, the resiliency. Absolutely. Wow, hey, so, good stuff. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you very it. much. Thank you. Cheers, thank you. Yes.